I try to run this tool to scan my system and the results are not looking good. In this video, I will show you a tool that we can use to audit and perform Linux system hardening. This is Linus, a security auditing and hardening tool for Unix-based systems. If you have watched my previous videos, you know that I'm using Kali Linux before. After I switched to Arch and customized it based from my requirements, I never ran any auditing tool yet, so this will be the first time to test the security of my setup. Installing Linus is very easy as it is available in most package managers. The way on how we run this is to pass the audit system subcommands. There is also an option to run this against a remote system, but we won't cover that in this video. To be able to perform all the tests, we need to run this as root. It will take a minute or two for the scan to finish. Now that Linus is done, let's have a look at the results. From the top, we have here my system information. Then below that are the actual test results, which are nicely arranged by category. For example, under boot and services, it was able to detect that my grub bootloader doesn't have any password. The risk here is that if an attacker was able to physically compromise this, he will be able to reset the root password and gain easy access to the system. Also, if you notice, Linus didn't provide the steps on how to resolve this because this part only shows the concise result. We will see the details such as the relevant documentations at the last part of this whole output. Aside from the missing bootloader password, Linus was also able to detect a lot of unsafe and exposed services. At this point, we don't know yet the details, but this gives us now an idea how many services may be at risk. The kernel section looks okay as we don't see any alarming results. Same with memory and processes. The user and group section got several hits though. If you are running a multi-user system, you need to pay attention to these results. For example, make sure accounts have expiry dates so that if a user leaves or no longer needs to have access, the account will automatically be deactivated. But in enterprise scenarios where a machine is using a central authentication server such as Active Directory, this might not be too relevant. Kerberos, I don't use that in my machine so I can ignore it. But shell settings is something I should pay attention to. The first issue is that I'm missing a timeout setting. Just note that this is for your shell and not for your desktop session. Let's have a quick demo so we can understand. To set the shell timeout setting, we will use this environment variable. So if we set five, that means after five seconds of inactivity, I will be log out from that session. In most cases, I don't want this since it might interrupt my work. I'd rather set the timeout on my desktop session so that it will just automatically lock the screen. But there are also cases where I want the shell session to take effect. For example, if for whatever reasons I need to perform some tasks as root, I want to be able to log out from that root session if I'm inactive. That is good for security and overall protection of my system. I don't want to continue running as root and accidentally hitting some dangerous commands I don't intend to do. So the point is, you don't need to blindly follow the suggestions and the results if it doesn't make sense or it will not give you any value. As much as possible, try to evaluate and do some adjustments based on your setup. It's your system, so you are the only one who can assess your own security requirement. There are two more results here, which is related to UMask values. UMask determines what is the default permission of new files, so I might need to look into this later. But for now, let's move on to the next sections. The file system section also has a lot of hits. This tells me different things. For example, slash home and slash var are recommended to be on separate partitions. But in my setup, everything is combined into one. We want them to be on separate partitions so we can mount them separately using hardened mount point options. For example, let's say we have an SUID binary inside slash temp that was dropped by an attacker. Any user can execute this and quickly switch to root. A common hardening mount point option is to mount slash temp with no SUID parameter. As an effect, any SUID binary will not work. Aside from that, another good hardening option is the no exec parameter. If we put this on a mount point, any executable such as malwares or stagers for C2 frameworks won't be able to run. So seeing these results, I would definitely apply this into my current setup by at least making sure I have the hardened mount point options applied to certain places. Let's move on to the networking sections. Here we see that I don't have any rules to find inside IP tables. This means all network connections are allowed to enter my machine. So we can have a rule set similar to this. This will only allow SSH connection from certain hosts. It also will perform rate limiting, and it will log a message when a connection is dropped, which is helpful if you are troubleshooting connection issues. This is just a simple demonstration on the possible rules you can add, and it depends entirely on how you use your machine. Speaking of SSH, the next section is something I must take seriously. 
There are a lot of things here, but let's do some prioritization. The setting that stands out from the results is the permit root login option. I think all of us will agree that we shouldn't let direct root login through SSH. When I configured this Arch machine, I mainly focused on the offensive security side of things, so I didn't have a chance to check settings like this. Next one is the maximum allowed session per SSH connection. The default is 10 sessions. The risk of setting this to a high number is that there will be more opportunities for exploitation. If you have watched my previous videos about various evasion techniques, you can get a sense that attackers can also piggyback on existing SSH connection to hide themselves. So I may want to reduce this number to make sure there is no stealthy connection being used. There are more settings here, such as preventing TCP forwarding, maximum auth retries, and TCP keep alive. I need to review them and evaluate which makes sense to follow. If we continue going through the results, we will see more things that needs my attention. There are various kernel parameter settings that are not configured properly. Something got flagged about my crons. There are a lot of broken permissions on critical files. There is even an expired SSL certificate, which I don't have an idea where is it coming from. And one of the most important things is that I'm missing security tools, such as a malware scanner. Once you finish running Linux, the remediation section will appear at the bottom. You will see information here similar on what we discussed above. Having a Linux system doesn't mean we are immune to malwares and attacks. We still need to evaluate our setup and run auditing tools like Linux in order to lessen the risk of being compromised. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.